Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inks and I'm from my Jersey Trunks and today we are going to be checking out analog inputs for S1200 series PLC. We're going to be doing two types, well, it's not two types, but the two uh, from different two different points. One of them is actually going to be from uh, actual PLC right here and we have as well additional card which is the analog intent and analog output card itself. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to check out how to wire them all the points, what they mean and how to do them. Check out the TI portal uh, where the values are stored. There's not going to be much of a programming with the norms and scales and things like that. There's a lot of people out there that does that. This is more or less more where these videos are for you to understand how they work, how to test them and if you're having any problems, sort of uh, diagnose any issues that you have. And for us to generate the uh, 4 to 20 amp, uh, 4 to 20 amp milliamp, milliamp signal, we're going to be using a, uh, a Fluke it's a number 789, a Protus meter, really, really good meter. It definitely saves my life quite often when I'm uh, struggling uh, to read the uh, uh, diagnosing the problems. And this way, I'm using this guy to simulate my uh, analog signals, and then I go into PLC, check out the tags, and see, make sure that the ranges are correct, and everything like that. This guy it is perfect for you. So, even though it comes quite pricey, you don't have to get some uh, pricey, it's quite pricey, this one is. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're doing today. So, uh, this uh, this video is going to be, as usual, part of the old other uh, 1200 series PLCs that we've done part of the... Uh, 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 playlist itself. So yeah, all the rated manuals and everything else I could believe or think would help you in a possible way to check out the description below. I'd often leave all sorts of things in there uh, for you guys to check it out. So definitely, yeah, check it out if you can. So on that, let's get started. <music> Here we are, all uh, set in and wired in, uh, good to go. So the first, the main thing we're going to be working with this analog card in here, even though I have another analog in, uh, card in here, which is just analog, this is analog uh, in and out, and also you got analog in here. Before we get to this card in here, I'll quickly talk about this, uh, this, this card in here, because this, this channels in here, which more or less come from almost with all the S200 series PLCs, they are for 0 to 10 volts only. So uh, if you are work, uh, want to work with, uh, with, uh, with the current, uh, these are not going to be any good for you, so uh, bear that in mind. And wiring, usually, let's presume you have a pressure sensor. Wiring is, uh, is, is the power supply, you're going to be powering that pressure sensor. Then the negative goes one to pressure sensor, one comes down in here. And then obviously the positive it goes into the pressure sensor will be a uh, converted into analog uh, 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 current signal and or voltage in, in this case will be voltage and will be sent back to channel zero or one and that's pretty much how the wiring will work and the same comes down to this one as well as you can see down here we got l1 and uh, l l plus and m those are uh, that is a power supply for the card as you are not um, as you're aware maybe all the cards additional card has to have their own power supplies. So, uh, and from there on we got earth in here. These three dots in here pff, means nothing. They're just a waste of space uh, because they, they, it's usually for the expansions for the different other cards. And you have A4 channels in here and you get two channel, analog channels, uh, analog output channels and the bottom, which you're gonna check out in other video. So I have a little bit set up this card already in here and just quickly wanted to point out a couple of uh, issues you could possibly have. And one of them is because I have set up the channel uh, one in here with my process meter in here, which is pretty much, you can class that as my sensor, as you can see, is outputting four milliamps. And see what happens if I go under it. So if I go under it, the card goes into fault and is uh, measuring the undervolt, uh, undercurrent, so uh, which are gonna, uh, uh, or, or under level, whatever, whichever way you want to call it. So uh, for that, I'll show that in a minute how that is programmed. So that's the one big plus when you're using a uh, four to uh, twenty milliamps because you can measure the uh, cable breakage. So that's uh, for that. And if you are trying to send in, uh, like especially for this guy, if you're trying to send in current into that one, it will all go uh, red and it will detect that this is not, not correct uh, uh, signals coming in and it'll let you know with the errors. So that's pretty much when it comes down to card. So yeah, two channels in there, plus and a minus, which is uh, fairly, which already the same principle applies to this one. So uh, let's jump onto the TI portal and see how can we monitor and find out if our uh, signaling or, or the card itself is functioning as you should do. Here we are. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is uh, analog inputs uh, for a, a PLC itself. If you click on the PLC, go into general, 
go into I AI2 uh, in analog input to net channel 1 uh, channel 0 and channel 1 as you can see voltage voltage is the only one is available down there 0 to 10 volts and uh, that's pretty much what you can do in here and then the uh, only other thing you can do you can change the a uh, address as well if you wish to for those a uh, uh, channels so uh, that's that so what, what are you going to do in there and also if you are uh, starting from scratch usually these tags are going to be named for you already they are right down here so we're going to call it a voltage and that tag will appear straight away into your uh, default tag table as you can see in here and straight away you can click just monitor if you connect it to your plc and there you go there's values already jumping around even though there's nothing connected to it there's something going on so uh yeah so that's that but the one we are going to be looking at if you uh, go offline again and then you'll go uh, configuration and click on this card in here so uh, as you can see down here a new flag appeared so you can see all my io tags in here and that's my channel uh first channel in here but first before you're going to do that so you can see in here when you go on analog input channel zero and as you can see i have set this up to be a current which you can choose in here what is your current and uh in here you can choose oh options 0 to 20 milliamps or 4 to 20 milliamps we are choosing 4 to 20 milliamps if you you if you choose a, a 0 to 20 as you can see and a broken wire diagnostics it goes off completely so uh so yeah that's that's pretty much why you will want to use a 4 to 20 because it gives you the uh, breakage we're going to select that one so make sure it detects there's a breakage and this smoothing here is how smooth you want to be, be your uh, signal so uh is rather than uh, reacting to everything we can uh, take like a, a averaging i would i would call the averaging in a certain time period so at the moment we can leave this with is weak four cycles that'll do and if you keep going down, uh, there's nothing in there. So, and then there's analog outputs, and also you can do your addressing if you want to change your starting addresses and output addresses in here as well. So that's that. So uh, that's pretty much uh, where you would uh, more or less want to check your analogs in here. Usually, you will find them in here, and this is some sort of names already going to be assigned to it. The programmers usually will put some form of names to it. We don't have it, so we're going to put a current. There we go. So uh, once you've done that, they should all end up this way. You can find out what was the name to it, as you can see, and it ends up in a, uh, um, a tag table. And all you need to do is go straight into the monitor. And as you can see, at the moment, is roughly about uh, pretty much where it needs to be. So uh, on zero. So and if you look into the, I have a. Uh, page in here where we can have a look at it, what range should be so that's how I usually test my making sure my cards are working correctly and nothing is going funny business so uh, it is uh, so 4 to 20 milliamps so and uh, uh, 20 milliamp is going to be 27,648 so uh, in a nominal range so and then it's going to be overshooting here so that's what it is going to end come up so that'll be 32,000 and then obviously the undershoot undershoot range is going to be 1.1 blah 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 and that's pretty much going to be in a wheel or underflow and things like that you can go even lower there, there's a table in here you can download it for just uh, from Siemens find out what ranges you should be in so having done that now that we are ready to test our cards a uh, uh, signals in there what we're going to do we're going to go in our obs in here we're going to turn our uh, camera on of the plc let's enlarge that so uh, and we should be able to see the rest of it so uh so there we go and now i'm going to take this mic and we're going to go onto our protest meter which is uh right here without lights going into it so and then we're going to start raising it this is, as you can see, 6,000, 13,000, 20, 27, exactly where we need to be, 20 uh, milliamps is 27,000, analog, analog input is working perfectly well, and then we do the overshoot, and as you can see in here, it's already measuring overshoot, and it's starting already flashing red, it will return back to the normal conditions, it will return back to its normal, and there we go, we're going back down, 
And also you can do small. There we go. A little bit got under it, and then uh, is that gonna come up with? Yeah, that's it goes in the. Ooh, it needs to be lower than that. Let's see what level is. Oh yeah. I'm, I forgot from the table. What the, what was he saying? Something about. Come on. It was one point something? Was it a one point eight or something like that? No. Yeah, one point five. So he can undershoot quite a bit. Yeah, he can undershoot quite a bit. Well, that's ladies and gentlemen. It's it 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 it's how uh, we. Uh, work with and how I test my analog inputs and how they work in Siemens uh, uh, controller usually as I said uh, you don't even have to bear that you, you can monitor these flags fairly easily uh, just like I just showed you in here usually find out what the names were uh, what, what names was given to those uh, tags and find out they're uh, going to monitor and you should be able to see what is going on so that will do ladies and for our analog inputs and uh, hope this is helping you giving you a good idea how they work and how they function and how to test them and uh, some of the faults you could possibly have so yeah so other than that thank you very much for watching i hope that you enjoyed the video don't forget to like if you do like the video if you don't like the video smash that dislike subscribe as usual uh, if you like what we're doing here i don't know thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video